Welcome back. It's time for Echo Watch. But before that, a quick reminder of our opinion poll question tonight, uh, stemming from events that are taking place in Kibera, the government uh, trying to ask the residents to move in order to allow the uh, road construction, the Langata and Gong Road construction, but the residents are vowing to stay put, asking the government to compensate them fast. And tonight on our opinion poll question, we're asking you, do you think Kibera residents should be compensated? So send in your responses on the numbers 22162. Uh, on Twitter, you can talk to us at KBC Channel 1. My Twitter handle at Kato Achinga or that for John at J Curia. We will be sampling those views later on in this broadcast. But for now, it's all about EcoWatch. And our focus tonight will be looking at environmental conservation, bearing in mind that all players are needed if we are to take care of our planet. And we will be looking at what is it that the private sector is doing, what are NGOs doing, given that the government alone cannot be able to ensure that we sustain our environment. And for more discussions around this, I'm now joined by the CEO for NIC Bank, that is John Gashora, and he will be telling us all about a plan by uh, NIC to ensure that it works with Kenyans when it comes to environmental conservation, and particularly as we move towards improving our forest cover to at least 10% uh, forest cover in our country. Thank you very much, John, for coming to our studios this evening. Thank you, Catherine, for having me. And let's just begin with, in your perspective, what would you say is the state of our environment? Are we taking care of our environment as Kenyans? If well, you you, um, Environment is a very broad topic, uh -huh. and I certainly am not the expert to talk about overall environment, but I would say this, I've spent quite a bit of time learning about the forest cover uh -huh. as part of that environment study. And just to give you some statistics, if you look at the forest cover that we have in the country today, we are about 7, 7.2%. Yes. Compared to, say, Uganda, which is over 10%. And Tanzania, which is about 40%. So clearly, we are far below where we ought to be. And I think recently, the, uh, the minister announced that the president has, um, has um, pushed the ministry to ensure that we get to 15% forest cover mm -hmm. by 2022. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a tall order. Mm -hmm. uh, but the 2022 forest cover target of 15% mm -hmm. is not necessarily the optimum, but at least is a place we need to be. So if you ask me where are we today, mm -hmm. we're certainly way below that, mm -hmm. at 7%. Mm -hmm. On a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of you know, conserving our environment, where would you say Kenya is at this point? Well, look, I, I think I would answer that um, to say that there, 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 are which, there, there are a number of ways I look at that. Yes. First of all is look at it from an awareness perspective. Yes. Um, I think from an awareness perspective, we are actually doing quite well. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more people are becoming aware. And soon I'll be talking about the program that we embarked on, on mm -hmm. the tree planting program and other things that the government is doing. And I think that has created a good level of awareness. Mm -hmm. Certainly the plastic ban last year created a lot of awareness mm -hmm. in, the, in this realm of conservation. In terms of actual activity, I mean, the demands of the environment in this country are very high. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you look at the economic activity around East Africa, for example, we are perhaps first in that, in that league. And when you're first, what suffers often is the environment. Yes. So I wouldn't rank us very highly from that perspective. <laughs> from that perspective. Yes. All right. Yeah, as I had mentioned earlier, the, the Constitution has dedicated an entire chapter you know, to land and environment, yes. uh, which means obviously we can't leave all this to the government to you know, try and ensure that we sustain our environment. Yes. So as perhaps private sector players, what are some of the initiatives uh, that you're taking to ensure that we also take care of our environment? Because we need sustainable environment if we are to talk about improving our livelihoods sure. across the board. Sure, I think, um, well, Colin, you're absolutely right. The Constitution talks about the environment and the importance of it. Uh, the, the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals dedicate quite a portion of it towards the environment and use of land, use of uh, marine. Uh -huh. um, you know, it talk a lot about the environment. Um, and, and certainly the reporting that companies are adopting today, mm -hmm. they're talking about the triple bottom line mm -hmm. of people, planet, and profit. Meaning this has become a very important thing for companies. Um, as the banking sector, for example, me being a vice chair of KBA, I should announce that in 2015, we all adopted the Sustainable Financial Initiative, mm -hmm. where we set a number of principles, and one of the principles is very specific towards the environment. Mm -hmm. I'm giving that history to say there's a lot that corporates can do and are trying to do uh, to help with the environment. More specifically, I think there are a number of companies today in this country, uh, I may mention like the likes of Safaricom, mm -hmm. uh, were quite engaged 
engaged in forest conservation mm -hmm. and tree planting. Uh, Kenya Airways has done quite a bit of work. I believe BAT has a number of nurseries. And then that brings me to what we are doing as NIC. Yes. Um, as NIC, what we have done <coughs> is to say, actually, let's make this a bigger, a bigger uh, movement. Mm -hmm. um, it's great for me to sit here and say NIC has planted 100,000 trees. Have but you really, planted 100,000 trees? I'm sure we have. In a span of but, how long? But, but that is not, that's not the key. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the key. In fact, I don't want to talk about that because a few years down the line, mm -hmm. if you ask NIC to show you where they planted those trees, they may not be able to. <laughs> See, and that is usually the problem. I was going to problem. get to that. <laughs> yes, I know you're going to get to that. So what we did actually was get on something bigger. We decided to create a movement that creates consciousness about planting trees mm -hmm. and make it such that actually it's not about corporates, it's not about governments, it's about individuals. Mm -hmm. It's about you, Catherine, planting a number of trees, taking care of those trees, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then create a national movement. And I change the story movement became a national movement. Yes. We were supported and worked closely with the government, with the ministry, with a number of organizations come on board as partners in this process. So it was not just NIC alone, and it's not NIC alone. Mm -hmm. It's not a one-year movement, it's a continuous movement. And we continue put to push for everybody to ensure that they have the consciousness and are actively engage in planting trees. Mm -hmm. so At what the is end the of the day, we want to say yeah. we managed to plant X number of trees as a country as opposed to NIC or KBC. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to say as a country, we planted X number of trees. Let me give you some statistics. We, did some, we looked at numbers recently, mm -hmm. and we believe through the movement and the people who have joined us, the wider movement for planting trees today, yes. uh, we have planted over 7 million trees this year. Mm -hmm. The goal is 30 million. That's the goal we have set. Mm -hmm. For so just within making, one year. Within <laughs> one year. So I think we are making progress. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think is, uh, 7 million trees in a year is actually a lot for a country like ours. Mm -hmm. So what are the challenges that. you know towards reaching the, the, the number of trees that you want to plant within this one year? Well, there are a number of issues, actually. One is, um, is lack of seedlings, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. That when you set a goal like 30 million, you must have access to where, where a bit more than that seedlings. in seedlings. Yes. We don't have the seedlings. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the movement that we've created, we as NIC, one of the things we are now doing, and we're bringing on board some partners, we're actually working with Kenya Forest Services, mm -hmm. the likes of Friends of Karura and others, to actually create tree nurseries. Yes. So that is what we are now doing because we got to a point where there are no seedlings. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, where can we help? Mm -hmm. And I urge every company that is thinking about going into this to first think about investing in tree nurseries. So that's one challenge. Mm -hmm. The second challenge is the consciousness, as I said, the consciousness. I have called on the government to actually dedicate one week to tree planting. Mm -hmm. I congratulate the president and, and the ministry Mm -hmm. for having afforded a tree planting day that yes. was well coordinated and well done. But in my view, a tree planting day means you create consciousness for one day. Mm -hmm. What if you did it for a week? Mm -hmm. Who is the best communicator in this country today? It's the government. Mm -hmm. I'd rather they had a full week where they communicated, called people to action to plant trees for a full week. That I think would be very important. Mm -hmm. You had mm -hmm. mentioned, we, we talk about sustainability. So yes, we go one day, we plant trees. Do you have perhaps a strategy on how you follow up to ensure that you take care of these trees all the way to maturity? Because uh, we know people plant trees, then tomorrow people will come and walk off them. Yes. And then, you know, you, you're putting your money, but at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> you're not getting, you know, value for it. Absolutely. And I think it was that realization that actually moved us from saying, we will plant 100,000 trees to my earlier statement. Yes. Because we knew for that, we will call the media, we'll have a nice media opportunity, we'll yes. plant a number photo of trees, <laughs> we'll take a photo, up, mm -hmm. and then we, we move and forget, right? Mm -hmm. But for us, tree planting goes beyond planting. It's about tree growing. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been challenged to, because I talk too much about tree, tree planting, what about tree growing? Mm -hmm. And my answer actually has been, once you create consciousness in people, if Catherine goes and plants a tree in her backyard, Catherine will take care of it. Mm -hmm. However, if Catherine joins me to plant a tree at Gong Forest, Catherine will not take care of that tree. Yeah, very so true. the idea is to have you plant where you can take care of that tree. Mm -hmm. yes. So that is now the strategy that you're working towards. Exactly. All right. In terms of, you know, consumer awareness and habits, yes. what are some of the things that affect, you know, our environmental conservation that you have perhaps seen when you're coming up with this particular initiative? Things that we need to change as Kenyans if we yes. are to have a culture of growing trees and taking care of them. Well, look, I, I, think, I think one of it is actually economic and social need. There's... Um, 
the, the country is still a very charcoal-based uh, fuel uh, country, mm -hmm. right? If you move away from towns, everybody's on charcoal, mm -hmm. it's on firewood. And the unfortunate thing about charcoal and firewood is that it does not discriminate the size of a tree. Mm -hmm. Whereas timber for construction, you require to have a mature tree. When it comes to charcoal, a shrub mm -hmm. is, is good enough. When it comes to firewood, a tree that is barely three feet tall is enough mm -hmm. to join the firewood. So unfortunately, that's a habit that we must try to address, mm -hmm. to move people from using fuel mm -hmm. for firewood. Mm -hmm. And if they must, they must become then part of conservation. Mm -hmm. To work with the communities to say, once you cut down these trees, if nothing else, you'll have no firewood. Mm -hmm. So I think that is one of the, the, the challenges that we face. The second, the, the second one is, again, awareness. I say there has been good awareness. Mm -hmm. But awareness today is not followed with examples of action. When we were young, very young, um, we would have tree planting seasons in schools, and the teachers would force all of us to go and find seedlings. Mm -hmm. We'd spend time in the forest looking under the big trees to pluck seedlings that take them to school to plant. Mm -hmm. That needs to come back. That sort of awareness needs to be recreated. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, uh, I think the government policies must be such that they work through with the counties and everybody else to ensure that the communities come on board, mm -hmm. the communities take ownership, and the communities then propagate that idea. Mm -hmm. And I think this logging ban that is there, having it is useful, mm -hmm. having it is useful, but it's not sustainable. Yes. It's not sustainable. So it must be, there must be a plan that brings in the community because economic needs are there. Mm -hmm. Bring in the community so that you have a long-term sustainable solution. In terms of strategy, perhaps, what advice would you give the government when it comes to you know, trying to change you know, this is like essentially changing a livelihood because there are people who have been relying on charcoal burning yes. for their livelihoods yes. and now you're telling them there is a ban on trees and we need to conserve our environment. So perhaps in terms of advice, what would you tell the government to approach uh, this particular issue to ensure sustainability? Well, one, I, I think moving people from wood fuel to gas fuel, for example, which I think was an initiative the government has embarked on, um, I know it has been a bit slower than they wanted it to be. I think that's a very good start mm. uh, because people need to realize that it's not all about firewood, mm. that there are other ways uh, to cook, mm. there are other ways to get a fire. The second thing is what I talked about, community involvement. Community involvement, once the community is glued in, you can grow trees sustainably mm -hmm. and use it for firewood sustainably. Countries have done that. Mm -hmm. But then there must be that conscious effort to say for every tree that you cut, you replant. Mm -hmm. You replant two. Two is that there must be a certain size the tree must grow to before you cut it. Mm -hmm. So that sort of thing is important. And finally, I think policies about land use, we have talked about that many times, mm -hmm. are quite important. I'm a big advocate of saying that we must perhaps come up with a policy that says X amount of land must be set aside. And by that, I don't mean that, you know, we must have 10 acres set aside in any particular area to plant mm -hmm. trees because yes. that's not realistic. That's what people will grab, is to say, John, you have a quarter of an acre. Out of your quarter of an acre, mm -hmm. we want a quarter of that land to go to some kind of vegetation cover. Mm -hmm. yeah? And I think that would help a great deal. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, it's good to see NIC putting its money where its mouth is. Yes. Uh, but that brings us to the question of the costing. Yes. Yeah, because we're telling people to, to grow trees, but is it accessible in terms of the costing for the common monainchi? Because we're talking about a seedling going for 100 shillings. How yes. many people can afford to really you know, buy these seedlings and plant trees? That's a very good question. Yeah. Um, it can be expensive, but what we found through this process is actually there are a lot of places where you can get free seedlings, mm -hmm. yeah? if you look clearly for it. Um, KFS has a number of places where actually communities can get seedlings for free. Mm -hmm. um, the Greenbelt Movement works with a lot of communities where seedlings are quite well priced just for sustainability. Mm -hmm. And lastly, as I said, when we were young, mm -hmm. we planted trees by going into the forest. And under that poor forest cover, there are always seedlings that you know they'll die because they'll not survive long term, mm -hmm. that we used to pluck and go and plant. Today, if we push people hard enough, even in the villages, I know they're able to get seedlings. Mm -hmm. Where there is desire, there is access. Mm -hmm. But yes. in terms of costing, I mean, would you say that the, you know, there's still need for us to come up with a way to, to, you know, to bring the cost down? Because yes, I think, 
Absolutely, and I think that is where, for me, the corporates play a role, mm. is to come in and invest in these seedlings nurseries. Mm -hmm. Once you do, the way we will work, for example, as NIC, is a portion of it has to be given out for free. Mm -hmm. And a portion of it will be sold for sustainability. Mm -hmm. So the ones for free, if people come and say, I cannot afford, but I need seedlings, we'll give them. Mm -hmm. The others who will have to buy. Mm -hmm. yeah? And if every company jumps in and does the same thing, what will end up is the cost of seedlings will become very affordable mm -hmm. to almost everybody. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, in terms of the strategy for this particular campaign of yours, how yes. long do you want it to run and what is it that you're hoping to achieve at the end of it? It's not a short-term campaign, mm -hmm. so it's not one that will have an end of it, mm -hmm. let me put it that way. I think we want this There's to be There's no a, immediate result. <laughs> a, sustainability is a long-term game, and yes. this is about sustainability. So we'll keep going, we'll keep going. What do we want to achieve? I think we have set ourselves milestones. I mentioned 30 million trees. Um, I know that's a very high target, but I think we can get there. And once we get there, we will probably surpass it. Others, like the government has set much higher targets. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get there. Mm -hmm. The key is to get everybody to work at this. It is not, um, as I keep saying, we must move away from the nanny state. It's not about corporates doing. It's not about the government doing. It's about individuals coming in to join this movement and doing, changing Kenya. Mm -hmm. Let's change the story. Mm -hmm. So yes. how are you involved you know, the Kenyan people into this particular project? So um, the way we did this thing is that, um, or the way we started this movement, is that we did not talk about the number of trees that we were planting as an IC or our other partners, the Greenbeard Movement or the JE Achievement or our media partners. We didn't talk about how many trees we talked about, we were planting, mm -hmm. but we spent a lot of money educating people, mm -hmm. talking about the need, the consciousness. We gave a lot of free seedlings to those who could not afford. We challenged people on Twitter and other media mm -hmm. to plant trees and also worked closely with government mm -hmm. to come up with some of the tree planting. Uh, things that you saw, including oh. the tree planting uh -huh. day. So I, I think um, that's, that's, I would say that's, that's what we did. That's the consciousness that we created. Uh -huh. or we, and that will continue. Uh -huh. We will continue to invest more money in awareness than in actually uh -huh. people going to So you asked was more of your looking to change the mindset. Thank you. Change the All mindset. Right. All right. I'm informed change our the time story. is up. Everybody is a change agent. <laughs> I'm informed our time is up, but I'll just give you, you know, 30 seconds to look straight into the camera and yes. talk to the Kenyan people about why it is important for us to all participate in this particular initiative to plant trees. You can just look straight into the camera. So Sorry, this camera. This camera. Okay. So yes. I would say this. Um, over the years, we have had the same story. Yeah. Every year it's a story of drought, people dying because of lack of food, and it's a story of floods, once the rains come, people being swept by fans, cars floating, as I call them, the boats of Nairobi. <laughs> yeah, the cars floating. And that seems a year after year. And every time we talk about the same thing, the lack of tree cover, mm -hmm. the lack of tree cover. It's time that we all rose up and say, this story is becoming annoying. This story cannot be the story our kids and their kids read when we were there. Mm -hmm. We cannot be responsible because they look back at our generation mm -hmm. and say that generation is the one that caused this story to continue. Yeah, destroyed our planet. We need to get together and change the story. Change the story for the future and for our kids. All right, thank you very much. Unfortunately, our time is up, but we do appreciate what you're doing in terms of environmental conservation. Thank well, we much. have been talking to the CEO of NIC Bank, that is John Gashora, who is just telling us part of the initiative that they are undertaking as private sector players, trying to change the mindset of Kenyans in order to create the consciousness for each and every one of us to rise up and take care of our environment, because at the end of the day, this is what will take care of us. This is where we have to put an end to Echo Watch, but Caroline Jenga is up next with the day's business, so stay tuned. <laughs>